What is up everyone, Circleflex here bringing you guys a, a little review of the Caravan Action X. I know I'm a little bit late compared to all the other YouTubers, okay? But the Caravan Action X, a lot of you will probably have it in the garage because of the, the missions and bought it at a discount or maybe you were even crazy enough to grind it completely and got it for free. But the Caravan Action X is the British Tier 8 Premium Heavy Tank. Um, with basically the Caravan Tech Tree variant with the, a slightly uh, lower caliber gun compared to the Tech Tree one. So if you're familiar with the Tech Tree Caravan, which went from being the worst tier eight heavy to one of the best, and basically a Tech Tree variant of the Patriot tank in the American premium, we now also have the Caravan Action X, which is the premium version of it, basically. So let's get right into it. You have a 20 pounder gun uh, with a high base pen, 226, 258, uh, APCR or gold ammo pen, <clears throat> 42 HE, which is meh because it's like a, such a low caliber. Dispersion value is really good at 32, 2.3 aiming time, which is fine because we get first steps at, the, at these points. Uh, you have a base range of 380, which is perfectly workable at tier 8. You have a somewhat decent top speed for a heavy, and the other big thing about it is that it has a really good turret. Now, there's one annoying thing about British tanks and, and their low caliber shenanigans, and that is that with with a low caliber if you want to use apcr or you need to use the apcr at some point because you need that extra pen to uh, shoot the type 4 in the lower plate or something like that with the 258 apcr uh because it is only 230 damage but you still pay a lot of credits for the apcr rounds shooting premium in this tank is actually really 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 costly just like the patriots but it does have a base pen of 226 so if matchmaking is kind or you're meeting a lot of soft targets, uh, you won't be dipping into this too, too much. Um, on the upside though, with a smaller caliber than the regular Caravan, also comes a higher, uh, comes actually not a higher rate of fire. Compared to the Caravan, it has the same rate of fire, but less uh, damage per shot. Because if we compare it to the uh, tier eight uh, British Caravan, you can actually see it. And then it has less DPM than a regular Caravan, but it also has, uh, the Caravan has the 280 damage per shot. So <laughs> you get less than that, but you are more accurate, um, you know, which is nice. You're also a little bit faster and your turret armor gets better. Uh, there's a couple of things about the armor that we should talk about though. And that's the fact that the premium version has these like spaced armor plates alongside the sides that are actually modeled into the game to actually provide some uh, some from protection from like HE and heat, I think as well. Um, so that's nice, but and you kind of you have a different turret than the regular tier eight caravan. This is kind of like the, the stock caravan turret, I think it is, or so. But it's it is just really solid, right? It's good armor, uh, especially around the gun metal. It is really gnarly. the The upper plate here is two sixty, but it's a it's at a really uh, really good angle. Sorry, where did my ten go? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Come back. You can't leave. Uh, but here's the one thing that is awkward about it, and that's actually that they nerfed the hull armor. So, uh, if we compare this again to the uh, British Tier 8 Caravan, you can see that the hull armor actually went down, because the hull armor on the Caravan uh, is, I think, around 75, and the hull armor on the Premium is 50. So that's actually a pretty big deal in terms of overmatching and side scraping. So you have to be basically, you you basically can't side scrape in the premium version of this tank. You can because people can still shoot your tracks and you'll still try at least to have give them like an awkward shot. But it's a lot less reliable than on the tech G variant. So do keep that in mind that if you play a lot of the regular caravan, you're like, oh, wait, I can't wait to make some money in a similar tank. You're going to be sometimes in a rough spot because people will overmatch your site a lot faster than they will the tech tree variant. So keep those two things in mind. And um, <clears throat> yeah, let's just uh, jump into the game, shall we? I haven't actually played uh, this, um, the, this tank too much. Uh, I played, I think, two games in it when it just came out, and basically, I died in like two seconds, and I was like, you know what, maybe it's time to not play tier 8 right now, because we all know the state of tier 8, right? So, anyway, as we load in, let me go to the correct one here. 
We're gonna load into Pilsen and we're in a 5-10 matchmaking game, which is actually kind of nice. I like 5-10 matchmaking for the most part, especially in a non-limited matchmaking tank. We're gonna meet a lot of tier 10s, of course. By now, we all know how the tier 8 matchmaking goes. And um, yeah, no, this is actually pretty, pretty decent. We are on Pilsen and actually, just as a, you know, let me know in the comments, but what do you guys think about Pilsen? I actually think it got a little bit worse for the most part. I feel like the middle of the map and the one, two, three line, the heavy tank, heavy tank side, let's say, I think got a lot worse. I think it's really awful to fight here, but you basically need to fight there as a heavy still. But it's, in my experience, a lot more awkward because there's so many ditches everywhere and they close the doors on this side of the buildings. I just really am not a big fan of it. And what they did to the 7890 line is probably better than the old map. But I feel like we got one third of the map got better, whilst two thirds of the map got worse. But I would love to hear your comments on this, because I, you know, it's kind of hard to gauge what people think about Pilsen, because not everybody, maybe some people haven't even played on it yet. Because, you know, it's just how lucky do you get <laughs> with the matchmaking, right? So anyway, we're going to go to the heavy tank corner regardless. And uh, try see what we can do, but they're like, you know, it's gonna be kind of a, <clears throat> let's say, um, like an easy start. Not not much is gonna be happening yet, but if I take a look at the free camera here, I feel like they added so much rubble everywhere, and there's so many crossfire things going on, and you still cannot really fight in the middle here, as you see, it's 50 TP coming, but. <clears throat> I just feel like the old version of all of the of this these lanes of fighting are very very bad. And also, how the hell did this tier eight artillery shoot the 704? I believe and splash me and the Japanese heavy behind me. Don't know how that goes. Anyway, let's get back into it. The 50 TP is there, and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna do much against it. Hold down T30 with an ISM with crossfire. So I break down the door, and then I start peeking for the 50 TP. We don't see him yet, so he's probably moving. <clears throat> and again, the ice tree got shot there by something, so I'm like, alright, guess we'll back up again a little bit. But as you can see, there's, there's no, and this is probably also comes down to the way I play, but I feel like I can't really be aggressive, and I can't really sway the battle in any way. Like, I, I just kind of sit behind rubble and kind of peek at, like, hold down T30s, and that's about it. I still get a <laughs> really cheeky shot into the roof of a D30 there. Super cheeky, but hey, sometimes it works. Might as well take the shot, right? It's not like we have much else to do. And now the SCM is going to give us something to do, but our Caravan Action X friend here is going to take care of him first. And I'm still like, you know what? We could probably still move forward. It could have been a TD overlooking it, but hey. 50 TP comes out. Get the tracking shot, and just like a Yag-88, <clears throat> having such a short reload, you can keep a lot of things per tracked. And some tanks might require like two shots to track because of your low caliber, but a lot of tanks I've found, you can track fairly regularly just with one shot. So here, I'm just like, alright, I'm never gonna get a shot. I'm gonna pull back as much as I can, and he shoots, the, shoots our outer tracks, which is pretty nice. But again, it's just so awkward. If you see how many tanks we have on the free line, and then there's also the campers at A1 and K1, it's just incredibly awkward. Almost as awkward as the Jack Tiger shooting HE at us, which I'm very grateful for, because he only took off like 200 health instead of like 600, so it is what it is. I'm also getting some spotting, and I'm in a really awkward spot because I don't want to give the 257 any shot either. I'll try to go for the Jack Tiger lower plate, still keeping it out of the 257. I'm kind of juggling between everything right now. And the Egg Tiger is now switching to AP, because he bounced 560. But again, I'm just trying to get tracking slash spotting on him, snapshotting his lower plate. Uh, take, putting our focus in on the 257 after the Yak Tiger dies, and we're just waiting a little bit. So, again, we have a whole force on the 1 2 3 line, and there's literally two tanks stopping it. And I feel like that wouldn't happen on the old map. So I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And also we can't really go for the 257 from the angle we were at. So I'm going to push forward to get a better angle on the 257. And right along this corpse. And this is like the perfect shot on the 257. 
And I'm over here, I'm like, all right, you know what? We can probably track it. And then I'm like, all right, I should shoot the back. But then I'm like, maybe I should track him again. But it's a 257, so we can't damage at the same time because of the fee shift hole. So we track him and I shoot him in the back again and he gets away in full health. Oh, I almost said full health. But he gets away on barely any health left because of the fee shift hole saving him there for a little bit longer. And the team kind of collapsed there. The T30 is still alive. The 257 is unfortunately still alive. And the Waffle, as you can see here at, uh, what is it, G6, is still overlooking the, basically the middle of the map. So the 257 finally dies to a Super Pershing of all things. And now we have to take care of the Waffle, basically. And I'm like, alright, we need to make a move. They have so many TDs in the back everywhere. Snapshot the, the Waffle. The Waffle snapshots an APCR shell into us with the, um, the lower... Caliber gun and I'm no I'm just booking it towards the, the corner. Because there's still a T30 on the right. Rhyme metal with full heat. Or at least the heat shell. I think it, he might have been like uh the 270 alpha as well. We get a really cheeky tracking shot here. And this is where the accuracy of the gun just kind of shines through. We check him again, he returns fire to IS3. He kills the IS3, the scorpion is in the way. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> nice beam. I guess we're not gonna kill that guy then. The Waffle also dies through the 704 behind us, which is really nice. So he is finally dead, but we have to take care of the T30, and the T30 has 750 alpha average. So we could be a potential one-shot for him. So I'm just picking, like, we need to kill this T30 together, boys. So the Super Version is like, you know what, I feel you, brother, and he's gonna go in. So if me and the Scorpion can help him out a little bit, I'm just kinda like, Hoping the T30 is not going to peek here, and I'm kind of anticipating him coming out on either this side or the left. So I'm just waiting, because the Super Pershing can take a hit, and maybe even bounce it with a weird armor layout. <clears throat> and then we can kind of take advantage of that later in. But here's another thing I don't like about Pilsen. Why is there like a hill at K1 and A1 with a lot of forest? It's it, like, they just, I feel like they screwed over half the map for like no reason. But hey. Anyway, so the Super Pershing spots the T30, and then he also spots the Yak-88, who's been sitting there probably the whole game. And I'm trying to get to shoot this Yak-88, and I get blocked again by the same Scorpio like twice. I track him, which is nice. And then, whilst I could retrack him, if I if the Scorpio didn't block me again, that would have been really nice, right? So, you know, if the Scorpion is kind of annoying me at this point, because if there's something I hate, it's people that, like... The screw you over like this, because he's also scraping into the tank, so we both have inaccurate shots. It's just, like, pretty awful. And the T-30 gets away with it as well, and the Yak-88 gets away with it. Uh, a, a lot more unscathed than he should have been, probably. So now I see the T-30 going for the right metal, and I'm just pedal to the metal to the right metal, because he can survive one hit. And he will out-reload out the T-30 if he's um, with the 12.8 uh, centimeter gun. So, I'm just gonna go in, RT finished them off, and I'm like, okay, the Yak-88 is still there, the artillery is there, judging by how we got shot at the beginning of the game. So those two people are there, the TV4 mod 1 is on the top right, the Scorpion G is in the middle of the map, but he gets cleared by the Scorpion that was blocking our shots a lot. So, the 704 could also be there, but I, I have to take my chances, and I think the 704 probably would have been spotted earlier if he was actually there by the Super Pershing, right? So, I'm just like, alright, what's the best way I can engage this camping spot that is K1? And here I take a look that they also removed the doors there, so you can't even peek there anymore. So this has become even more of a corridor on the one line. Which in my opinion is pretty awful. And here I want to go straight forward. <laughs> but I actually end up driving against the wall. Which in turn actually gives me a, you know, a little bit of a sense of confidence because he did, I, I didn't get spotted while I was doing that awkward peek there. So I'm just gonna rush forward and use this hill to my advantage. The AK-88 only has shots, I think, on our upper plate and the turret, so... We love the APCR to go through the superstructure, basically, but it's still only a, a yellow pen. So it's about a 50-50 about me penning that. Then we spot the artillery, who is there, obviously. So we kind of take a shot at him, and then... That I will finish him off. And then there's only the 704 left, who now, by now, got spotted at the uh, H, uh, H8, and uh, now it's just a matter of matter of cleaning up, right? There's been so many TDs in this map, <laughs> on this map as well, but uh, yeah, I would love to hear what you guys think about Pilsen. I I truly feel like two-thirds of the map are a lot worse 
And the other side of the map did get better. But was it worth the trade? I mean, it doesn't feel that way. I think I would still rather play in the old Pilsen than on this new Pilsen, personally. But maybe I'm just like an old old school player that prefers the old ways, I don't know. <laughs> so, the 704 actually kills that Scorpion that was blocking me uh, a bunch of times. And then we have somewhat of a ghost shell, and I'm like, okay, nice meme. Then the other one, we do pen, and he's turning towards the 704. We're not spotted, we're actually in a bush and shooting through a bush, so he can't see us. But by then, because of our ghost shell, the 704 puts in, puts in his second shot and kills the enemy 704. So all in all, pretty nice game here. 4100 damage and 1800 uh, assistance, and even blocked a little bit of 800 damage there. Uh, in 10-5 matchmaking, um, yeah, pretty decent game. Uh, I know you guys always want to see the, the post-game stats, so uh, let's take a look at that, because there's a little bit of a surprise. It was actually not an ace. I was like, what the hell? 10-5 matchmaking? I feel like I played pretty well. Let's take a look at the basic speed. It's like, oh, 1,514. Interesting. So this is not an ace on the EU server currently with the Caravan Action X. That is pretty crazy. It might be close to an ace, but I'm not sure, because this is the first game I played to get the first class medal. So, yeah, I actually expected an ace there, seeing how the type of matchmaking and how much damage and stuff we were doing. But it was actually just the first class. So let's take a look at the money earned here. I was using a premium consumable and I shot for 30,000 credits. Uh, so we got left without the credit booster. We had 76k, almost 77k, which is decent. Uh, like I said, the moment you dip into the APCR, your... <laughs> your your credit earning capabilities are going to go down quite a bit. But I have a feeling also with the basic speed here that if you're going to spend the APCR and have the 260 base spend high velocity APCR with a really accurate gun, you could do some work. If you're just in it for the third mark or just in it for the for the crew XP and just want to get monstrous games and you do spend that full APCR, then <laughs> apparently you can get pretty... Pretty crazy, but you know, the low alpha of 230 will dip into your wallet quite a bit there. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little uh, review, replay of the Caravan Action X. I know it was a bit late, but you know, I figure I'd give you guys my views on it. Let me know what you think about the tank and let me especially know what you think about Pilsen. I would love to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys.